in ancient temple in South India. You know, Krishna is uh, in his on his altar you know, with his flute and you know, sweet smiling face, and he had a very nice uh, relation with one of the devotees there who was a sweeper sweeping the uh, temple. So now once the sweeper goes to Krishna and says. I pity you sometimes. So Krishna says, why is that? So he said, don't you get tired? You're all the time standing in one position. You don't even get to sit or sleep or take rest. Look at me. I work whole day. I clean the temple. But at the end, I do take rest. But you don't have any rest. You simply stand there. So then he said, my Lord, if you allow, I would like to serve you. So Krishna says, how is that? So he says, why not we just exchange places for a day and then you go and take rest. So Krishna says that can be done provided the condition is that you don't do anything except just stand there in my place. You know, don't make any decisions. Don't don't do anything. The sweeper says, uh, well, anyway, you are talking as if you do a lot of things. What do you do? You anyway stand there, you know, with your flu. I also do the same thing. So Krishna says, mind that condition. Okay, don't do anything. And I promise I don't do anything. So then the, the, the day arrives and they, they change places. And now the sweeper is, in, you know, standing there like this. So then one um, very rich man comes to the temple. So he looks at the Lord and he's like praying, you know. And then after praying, he just opens his money purse and takes out uh, two crisp notes of 2000 rupees, puts them in the hundi and then he's just joining his hands in a prayerful mood. But then what happens His money purse, which is uh, full of, you know, cash money, he just forgets it uh, near the hundi and he leaves. Now the second man comes there, he's a very poor man, just takes out few coins, a rupee coin and a two rupee coin and puts it in the hundi and in a very prayerful mood, he's telling the Lord, my Lord, we have nothing to eat at home, haven't eaten for several days, oh, please bless us, please take care, please protect my family. And then when after the prayer is over, when he just opens his eyes, he sees there the money purse, you know, the rich man's money purse and then he just takes it as if it's Krishna's blessings. So he just looks here and there, doesn't find anybody claiming it, he takes a purse and walks away. And then after some time, a sailor walks in and the sailor is in a very prayerful mood and he's been there for like a half an hour or so praying, praying, you know, I'm going for sailing today. I don't know when I'll be back. Please take care of my family. Please see that the ship sails well. You know, the, the waves don't give us trouble. The area is just praying and praying. And after some time, he sees the rich man walks there with the police or he's all there with the policeman and he's like, you know, somebody in the temple must have taken my money purse, but the temple is empty. There is nobody except the sailor. So then he just says, oh, this man must have taken my, my money purse. Now the sailor is defending. I haven't touched. I don't know. I have no idea, but nobody's listening to him and they just want to arrest him. Now at this time, our duplicate Bhagavan, you know, who's become Krishna for the day, he says, enough is enough. I can't tolerate injustice. After all, I'm Bhagavan. So he immediately says, stop, stop, stop everybody. He hasn't taken anything. Let me tell you who has taken. So then he clarifies. You see that poor man who had just gone, you know, he's, he must be on the way. He has taken the purse and the sailor has not taken. So now the things got, get sorted out. So that day evening after Sandhya Aarti, when they again exchange places back. So Krishna is asking the sweeper, so how was your day? The sailor says, oh, it's tiring. You know, I had to sort out so many issues. And Krishna is like, sort out issues? I guess we had an agreement that you won't do anything. He said, no, but I had to, you know, there was an injustice happening. And then he explains the whole thing to Krishna. And then Krishna is like putting his um, hand on the head and like, why did you do that? And then the sweeper is like, what's wrong? And then Krishna says, look, I had planned it. Everything was my plan. <clears throat> so he says, how is your plan in this? So he says, look, the rich man who came there and offered me some service, he's supposed to die within a couple of days. He's going to meet an accident. Now, he hasn't done uh, much good karma in this life. So I really wanted that his money to be utilized by that poor man who had no food to eat so that he accumulates some good karma before he, uh, you know, uh, goes and meets Chitragupta. And this poor man, if he hadn't gotten the money today, he and his family will die out of starvation. So I wanted to help him because he's been praying to me a couple of months now. So I wanted to give him some money and place him nicely. And now this sailor, I had made an arrangement that he gets arrested because if he would have go on sailing tonight, uh, his ship is going to sink. So when he just puts this all out, oh, the sweeper is amazed. Oh, my Lord, you have such, such intricate planning. Who goes where? What happens to whom? So why I said this story today is we talking about karma. And if we understand Krishna has already coded everybody's life, what's going to happen, when, who, how. Yeah, we do have a certain um, independence where we can decide, uh, but the consequences are 
predestined now of course this topic brings us to two varieties of people you know once they they, they get into this topic either some people become completely like you know they are karmavadis they are like i don't believe in you know you or, or previous karma this i just believe one thing as you said cause and effect work hard get the result and that's about it and then there are some people who are like even if we work hard what is the use everything is predestined right so some people they become like you know they work very hard but again the problem is because the equation is not only cause is equal to effect there's a lot of equations that is why there is every possibility that they may get frustrated right sometimes you see even the life of students they work very hard study very hard but whatever they have studied never came in the question paper and they failed and there are some children who never worked hard just studied four five questions and whatever they studied that only came in the exam so then we understand very easily that oh it's not only cause is equal to effect there are some other equations right missing equations so those who are karmavadis they become like you know sometimes frustrated because they're working hard they're putting so much effort but result is not in proportion and then those who are daivavadis they become very lazy somebody like dutrashtra when vidura approached dutrashtra that why aren't you stopping the war Dutrashtra just gave some lame reasons. What can I do? It's all predestined. This is what is supposed to happen. And Vidur said, "No, you have a choice. You can't stop Duryodhan from doing this, right?" So, what do devotees do? We are neither karma vadis. We are neither daiva vadis. We are mixture. That means we don't become lazy. We do action, and then after doing the action, we wait for the result, or the consequence, or the uh, sanction. or we wait for the sanction of the lord right for example there is a farmer now if the farmer can't say what's the point of plowing the fields i'm not sure if it's going to rain or not and rain is in lord's hand no the farmer plows the field and the farmer waits for the rain and if it rains he's very happy oh is krishna's mercy and if it doesn't rain he says that's my destiny it didn't rain it's not in my karma right so the devotees are the combination of daivavada and karmavada